So the first thing that we need to do with our challenge, uh, first of all, I'm glad you're here, is to choose our colors. And um, I'm not choosing my colors based on my subject. I'm not choosing my colors based on um, emotion. I'm just going to choose them randomly. And so there are several ways you can do this. You can just close your eyes and grab tubes out of a drawer. You can choose based on color families. So you can choose one red, one yellow, one blue to make it a little easier on yourself. Um, you can, if you're, work, if you're painting in watercolor or pastel, you can collect, um, well, for instance, in watercolor, all your paints might be in a palette. So write down the names of your paints and then draw those out of a hat. Um, and so we're going to choose three colors plus black and white. So here we go. We'll work with acrylic today. And um, I'm just going to close my eyes and wrestle around in here. Oops, dropped one on the floor. And grab a couple of tubes here and one more and see what I got. All right, I have Titan Mars Pale, which is kind of a red, light blue permanent, and Turner's Yellow. That ought to be interesting. A pretty high key painting it's going to be. And you should see what I have selected to paint. That's right here on my iPad. And this is a scene from France, which has a lot of strong darks. So this ought to be an interesting transformation. Get ready, get set, get going. Okay, so you can see I have my color squeezed out. White, black, Titan Mars Pale, Light Blue Permanent, and Turner's Yellow. These are Liquitex and Golden. And I have my image drawn out on my paper. So let's have some fun here. The first thing I want to do is to establish my color temperature. And since I have more warm colors than I have cool, I'm going to keep this painting fairly warm. And instead of putting the red pants on this figure, I'm going to put blue pants on him and see how that looks. So we'll just give this a shot. I'll start with a fairly neutral Orange and blue make kind of a neutral color, but I'm going to warm it up just slightly with the yellow. There we go. And get some of this color in. That's pretty green. So maybe get a little bit more. I especially want this area near the um, lights to be warm, so I'm making that much warmer. And when you're working in random colors like this, um, the interesting thing is that these subtle variations in color can be um, sometimes the most interesting. I'll paint right around this figure. I can see my drawing. This end up being much darker eventually. I might leave this white completely white. Opposite of what you would normally see, I'm going to get cooler down here to balance off the cool I'm going to put in his pant leg. But this is going to be a much more neutral cool. With acrylic, you really have to push the paint around a little bit to get it to blend. So I'm using this bristly brush.
And I'm not worried about the detail yet. I'm just establishing the color. I can always go back in and add more detail. Luckily, I got a yellow and a blue. I can make some green back here. But if I didn't, I could always change what I saw. I could make a violet for bougainvillea or any other color I imagine. Another pure in a more neutral painting. So this painting is going to have a lot different feeling than my reference photo, which feels sort of mysterious, I think, because it's going to be higher key. Although I can get my blacks to work. Black can work as a dark here. And I might be able to warm that up using some of this yellow. Just make this darker and darker. You can see I wasn't terribly careful with my drawing. Just wanted to give you a quick heads up on how to get away from the local, what they call local color, and that just means the color that things actually are. When you use color that you've chosen, whether it's randomly like this or some other way that you've chosen your color, it's called subjective color. It's amazing how many different variations of color you can mix with just a few pigments. Okay, kind of like that light neutral. I'm going to put some more over here to imply the stonework. I'm just going to paint right through what will be the, the feet on these figures. I can paint right over them with um, acrylic. And I'm not worried too much about getting it exact. Um, I just want to get the feeling for the subject and um, give you some idea of how this might work in 
the field. And I'm getting quite a glare here on my wet paint. I have to stop, take a brief break. Because the focal area here is um, up in the upper left, I'm also going to bring some of this texture down here to balance it out. Paying attention how to, how the lights and darks connect. There's a dark that connects to this set of steps here. I'm going to switch to a brush with a little more control. One of the things that drew me to this image was how this walkway meanders back into that narrow tunnel-y thing. So I'm trying to use some line that suggests that. Man, I just cannot see with the glare. Maybe if I hold it like this, I guess you guys can just still see. Now, starting to be able to see where it's going. You'll notice me starting to kind of work all around the page, not just focusing on one, bringing one area to finish. I am trying to keep it in play all over. At about this time, I realized that the whole painting is actually pretty cool and my warm accents are going to have to be near the figures in the focal area. So I guess I'm just changing my direction from a mostly warm painting with a cool accent to a mostly cool painting with warm accents. and also mostly neutral painting with some pure color near the focal area. Already that green is standing out from the rest of the image. And what I'm doing here is just sort of softening all that texture from working on the cold press. I want some of it to have texture, but only where I want the texture.
I'm wanting it to be warm but dark, and I do not have a color <laughs> that wants to be warm and dark. So maybe I'll just put it in and put a dark shadow around. It's amazing, you really don't need a ton of detail for figures. Just a few basic Her. shapes. They smell the brush. Here and put him back in in white. And paint around his hand a little bit. Went right over that. Of course, I can go right over it again. Or I can take it out right now. Time for the blue pants now. And hopefully these stand out almost like well, it's pretty blue. I might need to gram down a little bit up here. Not terrible. I like the pure color in the focal area. I might add a little line work after that dries, but that's about it. So see what you can do with three random colors, black and white. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed watching this painting come to life. Be sure and visit my website, rutharmitage.com, and I'll see you soon.